This is James Nelson from Massey Nackle Realty Services. I'm pleased to present to you New York City's investment sales overview for the third quarter of 2010. In the first three quarters of this year, New York City had $9.1 billion in sales. This was up 98% from the first three quarters of 2009. Office buildings accounted for the majority of dollar volume with 39%. As you can see on the chart on the upper right hand corner, this was down significantly from 07, 62.2 billion in trades, but up again from 2009 with only 6.2. Walk up apartment buildings represented 25% of the property sales. As you can see in the chart on the upper left hand side, the various sales for each of the asset classes. Mixed-use buildings, which are retail, with residential above, accounted for the next highest amount of sales with 235, with industrial sales being the lowest with only 10. The projected annualized turnover for this year will be just over 1%, which is down from 07 to 3%. Northern Manhattan has improved the most, with 108 properties selling in the first three quarters of this year. This was up 77% from the first three quarters of 2009. Meanwhile, the Bronx improved the least, with only 135 properties sold. This was a 16% decrease from 2009. As far as dollar volume, Manhattan improved the most, with a 130% increase in activity from the first three quarters of this year compared to the same period last year with a 74% increase in activity in the third quarter of this year versus the last quarter of 2009. Queens improved the least with only a 2% decrease and a 27% decrease from third quarter of 2009. One of the constant themes in this market has been a lack of supply. In the height of the market, our company had 741 exclusive listings. Whereas in the third quarter of 2010, we are currently only handling 520 exclusive listings. One important trend to watch is the number of our special asset assignments that we are currently handling. Last year, bank-owned properties and note sales accounted for only 5% of our listings. This year, that number is more than doubled, with 12.5% of our inventory being special assets. As far as the profile of buyers, we've seen an increase in foreign demand. Last year, only 3% of our buyers were from overseas, whereas this year it's been over double at 8%. The buyers have come from all over the world, including such countries as Russia, France, South America, Israel, Italy, Asia, and Turkey. Our website receives visitors from over 131 different countries. Now looking in at the Manhattan market south of 96th Street, in the third quarter of 2010, we've tracked $2.1 billion in sales. This was up 27% from the second quarter of 2010 and up 74% from the same quarter last year. Again, this was down significantly from the height of the market in 07 when Manhattan had over $52 billion in sales, but more than double last year's $4.2 billion. Another important trend to mention is that there have been over 20 sales this year at over $100 million, whereas last year there was less than half of that. As you see, the different types of properties that have sold on the upper left-hand corner, it's actually the one to four families that have had the most sales with 22, with walk-ups and retail following second at 20. As far as the number of sales that have taken place in the first three quarters, there's been a total of 105 transactions consisting of 112 properties. This has been a decrease of 17% from the last quarter, whereas the number of properties that sold during the third quarter of 2010 increased 29% when compared to the third quarter of 2009. There's been a 68% increase in properties sold for the first three quarters of this year compared to the first three quarters of last year. And our turnover right now is running well above the New York City average at 1.76%. This was a 34% increase over 2009 when it was just over 1%. Historically, 2.6% is the average turnover that Massey and Ackle has tracked since 1984. So we are coming back to historical levels. When you look at the average price per square foot of last year compared to this year, year to date, the pricing has been 
relatively stable. Last year's average sale per square foot was $922, whereas this year it's been $918. Cap rates for walk-ups and elevators have remained stable, with the average walk-up this year being just a shade under 6% at 11.5 times rent roll or $532 per foot. Meanwhile, elevated apartment buildings have been trading at less than 5% with multiples of 13.5 times at $432 a foot. We attribute this pricing stabilization uh, due to very favorable interest rates. At this point, five-year money can be borrowed at under 5%. Meanwhile, mixed-use properties are now trading at 6.5% caps, and office is also in the same range. These caps are only slightly off historical highs. Uh, in 2007, walk-ups were trading in the 5% range, whereas elevators were trading in the mid-threes. But what has compounded the drop in price per square foot is the fact that rents have subsequently come down and expenses have also rise. This would ex uh, suggest pricing shifts in the 20 to 25 percent range from all highs. Now to look at a couple key sales. As mentioned, the luxury townhouse market has held up well. On the upper left-hand side, you see a sale at 2 North Moore. This townhouse sold for $24 million. It was close to 11,000 feet and represented a sale of over $2,200 a foot. Of note is also a pricing record which was achieved this year on the Upper West Side at 22 West 75th Street at $18,850,000, which represented over $2,500 a foot. Meanwhile, uh, looking in the retail segment, uh, we have a picture of 250 East 49th Street. We sold this retail condo, which had a brand new 20-year lease with TD Bank for a 6.5 cap. This was a South American investor who purchased this for $11.1 .1 million, which was over $3,000 a foot. Although debt was plentiful uh, for this type of asset, the buyer elected to pay all equity. You can see at 306 West 22nd Street, this was a fully renovated 12 family that we sold to another overseas investor at under a 6% return. And at 29 East 61st Street, yet another sale to a foreign investor. This represented a uh, sale at under a 4% return as there was tremendous upside in both the retail and off. As you look at our office's historical contract executions, this gives us a picture of what to expect moving forward. As you can see, we had a real dip after the market shifted in late 2008 and we were signing as little as 25 contracts uh, per quarter. However, this last quarter has been very strong for our office where we've signed 44 contracts. This was almost in line with the second quarter of 08 before the market shift. This would suggest very heavy activity for sales in the next quarters. As you look at our sales, uh, excuse me, the contract executions company-wide, there has been a slight dip from the third quarter of versus the second quarter of 2010, we would suggest that the lack of supply has continued to make uh, contract executions challenging. But as we see those special assets uh, continue to increase uh, in availability, we think that contract executions and listings will pick up. This chart shows our historical contract executions by the number of our listings. Finally, to summarize, we've seen a an increase in foreign and institutional demand with foreign investors now up to 8% from last year. We've seen interest rates at historical lows. Pricing has shifted, making it an opportunistic time to buy. However, the supply restraint has made this a challenge. One trend also has been sellers who have looked to close before year-end to take advantage of capital, rate, capital gains rates before they potentially increase. We've also seen an increase, as mentioned, in the number of special assets, and Massey and Ackle contract executions are approaching pre-crash levels. If you have any questions or comments on this presentation, I'd be glad to speak to you. I can be reached at 212-696-2500 or the email address listed. I look forward to being in touch.